Hey, what's up guys? This is the Mesh Wi-Fi system by Tautronic. So they reached out to me and sent me this product for free to do a review. They didn't pay me for this review. So I'm going to do an unboxing, do some speed tests and different configurations. I'm also going to do some range tests. And at the end, I'll try to answer the question, is it worth getting? Why or why not? So this is a tri-band system, which typically means for wireless backhaul, meaning if these are wirelessly connected to each other, you're typically going to get better speeds on the secondary device versus a dual band system. Now I will do some speed tests and let you guys know what I get. Now this has a speed rating of AC3000 which tells me that this is on the previous wireless standards which is wireless AC or Wi-Fi 5. Now most devices are still on wireless AC so it should be fine and it is compatible with wireless AX devices so it should be good to go there. When we look at some of the specs, it pretty much has what you're looking for in a mesh system. So it has MoMIMO, it has beamforming technology, it even has USB 3.0 ports, which typically tells me that you can hook up a hard drive and make it into a network hard drive. And the good thing is it has four Ethernet ports and it does support gigabit speeds, which is good. And you know, when you look at the back, it's pretty much a Wi-Fi dead zone killer as they advertise, which is, you know, that's what mesh Wi-Fi's are designed to do. They basically, mesh Wi-Fi systems are two or more devices that act together as a single network to really get rid of Wi-Fi dead zones and to increase your network coverage, really. So let's open this up, see what's inside and go from there. So, technology enhances life. This is probably just the manuals and stuff. Sure, manuals, good to go there. Let's see if I can get this in the shot. So we get the power cords, looks neat in the package. So this is 100 to 240 volts, so it should be good in most places. Same thing here, just another power plug. Yeah, pretty much the same thing there. This is probably the ethernet. Let's see. Yeah, ethernet cable. Is it Cat5 or Cat6? Cat5 here, Cat6. Okay. Doesn't oh it does say it's cat six, which is good. Granted cat five E also puts supports gigabit, but it's good to see cat six cables. Oh and cat is short for category. You guys are wondering. Okay, so nicely packaged. It kind of off uh, first impressions it looks pretty much very similar to the size of an Orbi. So Talotronics, it, it's this matte white finish, which is nice. So you get USB 3.0 ports, you get four ports, you get a dedicated one for the WAN, which stands for Wide Area Network, which typ typically means the internet, uh, I mean, there's a whole debate going on, but typically Wide Area Network is referring to the internet. And then you have LAN, which is Local Area Network. So this one goes to your modem, and then you have three ports that you could use to hook up to other stuff. If you need more ports, you hook up one of these to an unmanaged switch. And I will have product links in the description below. Be sure to check that out. And hit that subscribe button while you're down there if you guys like these types of videos. So on and off, which is nice that you don't have to unplug it, but I mean, not a big deal. And you have your re reset switch. So very nicely shaped, I do have to say. So, Shape-wise, definitely looks pretty nice, and they're both they both look like routers. So obviously, in a system like this, one of them is going to be a router, and then the other one is act, going to act like an access point. So even though they are both routers, and I think this is the part that lights up. So looks like that's pretty much it for the box. Now we're going to set this up. Much, much, much later. All right, I've been running this thing for a week after unboxing. I wanted to see if there were gonna be any drops in connections or anything out of the ordinary that I would notice. 
and so far so good. The only problem I ran into was during initial setup when I'm connecting this to my modem. Now, the instructions say to turn, in, turn them on at around the same time. That didn't work for me, was having trouble connecting to the internet. What worked for me was turning on the router first, waiting until this blinked green, then turning on the modem. After that, it was able to connect to the internet, no problem, and it's been running great ever since. Now, I, I've written everything down here, so I have the speed test, range test, and everything. But before we get into that, my internet speeds are 480 megabits per second down and 24 megabits per second up. So this can only go as fast as my internet speeds can go in terms of accessing the internet. And the devices that I used are the Pixel 5, which is my Wi-Fi 5 device, and the iPhone 12 Pro, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device. Now, this mesh Wi-Fi is doesn't have Wi-Fi 6, so it's Wi-Fi 5, but it works with Wi-Fi 6 as well. And I actually got some interesting results testing with my iPhone on this thing, which I will get into shortly. So jumping straight in, I'm gonna basically do this mesh Wi-Fi how I do all my others, where I keep the same numbering scheme. So we're gonna start with option one, which is when you get a router by itself and connect it to your modem using the WAN port, which stands for Wide Area Network. And then you have three other ports you can use to connect to your other devices. If you need more ports, you hook up any one of these three LAN ports to an unmanaged switch, and that will extend your ports. Now, all the stuff that I'm talking about, I will have product links in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Now, this thing, when you hook it up to the modem directly, when I do speed tests with it, I get full speeds on both devices, which is what I would expect. Now, option three, we're gonna skip option two because these are both routers. Option three is called wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul. And that's when you connect this and this to each other via ethernet. Now, there could be an unmanaged switch in between that. There doesn't have to be. But the one thing that I noticed was for the secondary one, when you're connecting it, what you have to do is, if we're going, if this is the one that's connected to the modem, which is the primary router, you go from the LAN port, so this WAN port is hooked up to your modem, so then from this LAN port, you would go to an unmatched switch or you can go directly to this, and <clears throat> you actually have to hook it up to a LAN port. So I, I was assuming you would have to hook it up to a WAN port because that's the source of the internet, that's where it's coming from, but it looks like it actually wants you to connect it to a LAN port on the secondary one, so that's just worth noting that wasn't obvious to me. So once you do that, you have two other ports you're free to use. You can't use the WAN port uh, for anything else. But yeah, so that, that's what works for me. Okay, so when you do speed test with this on the secondary one, always on the primary one that's hooked up to your modem, you're gonna get full speeds. But on the secondary one that's hooked up via ethernet to this, I still got full speeds with both devices. Now we get into option number four, which is called wireless backhaul. When you hook these up to each other wirelessly, meaning this one's hooked up to your modem, and then this one is just you know one or two rooms away, probably two rooms away, and this one is just hooked up to power. Now, if you're wondering when you do this, can you hook, can you use the LAN ports if these are wirelessly connected? Yes, you can, and I've done a speed test on that one as well. So the speed test I got, this is this was the interesting thing. So the speed test I got on the secondary one that's acting as an access point, that's uh, not acting as a router, that one for the iPhone, I actually got 305 down and 18 up, so I didn't get full speeds with that. With the Pixel, I got 410 megabits per second down and 21 megabits per second up. And all the numbers I say are gonna be in megabits per second, unless if I say otherwise, but all the internet speeds, range tests, everything is going to be in megabits per second, not to be confused by megabytes per second. Okay, so, so the Pixel 5 actually got much faster speeds on wireless backhaul than with this one, than with the iPhone, which I thought was very interesting. Now, the other test that I did was on this one, when these were wirelessly connected, I hooked this up to my Xbox Series X, I did a speed test on that, 
and I actually got full speeds. Okay, so now we get to range test. So for the range test, again, I placed this in the same exact spot. I used these two devices. I went 20 feet away, which is still inside my place. I got full speeds with both devices. At 50 feet away, now here's the other interesting thing. The farther away I got, the iPhone did better, which is normally true for all my other mesh Wi-Fi's. The only thing that was weird was that, you know, the iPhone actually got slower speeds uh, on wireless backhaul when they were actually really close to this. But as you get farther away, the Wi-Fi 6 actually does better, even though this is a Wi-Fi 5 uh, mesh Wi-Fi. 50 feet, you're getting really good speeds. 60 feet, still getting really good speeds. 70 feet, you're still getting very good usable speeds, which I was like, oh wow, this is actually really good. At 90 feet, I was very impressed uh, considering the price of this thing. And at 100 feet, that was pretty much the cap. I actually had to do the test two or three times at 100 feet because sometimes it would disconnect and it would, uh, the phone would go to 5G. So then I would, then it would reconnect to Wi-Fi, then I would do the speed test. Okay, now in terms of the app, so the app is actually very easy to use. It gives you a, a good amount of options. Uh, you can actually also make a separate 2.4 gigahertz band if you wanted that. I know some people ask about that. So it does give you the option to make a separate one if you want to do that. Um, but it has, it honestly, it has a ton of options, more than what I would need personally. Um, but yeah, you get like a blacklist of stuff, like I, I'm pretty sure it's MAC address filtering. Um, you get, you know, firmware upgrades. You could turn off the LEDs if you want. You know, you can set up different usernames for the USB ports if you're hooking up the hard drive. So you get a whole bunch of options. You get UPnP, you get DMZ options and stuff. So a whole bunch of options and stuff that you can do with that. So let's jump into the USB port since I mentioned it. So I actually hooked up a flash drive to this just to test it out and it worked fine. What you have to do is when you go to your options, you, when you hook it up, you basically have to create a username for that. And I just picked something simple. I just picked admin admin and I was able to access this from anywhere on the network and I did some speed tests on in terms of writing to it from an Ethernet connected device and the speeds were not that great in terms of writing to it. I mean it was fast enough for most stuff but it was definitely not fast. So the speed tests I got were it was around 13 to 15 megabytes per second which if you multiply that by eight, let's just do a rough average and let's just say it was writing at around 100 megabits per second. So those were the speeds that I was getting when writing to it. And when I, when I wrote from this to the computer, it went a little bit faster than that. So, but yeah, uh, so if you're planning on streaming 4K footage from this, it's not gonna happen. It's definitely gonna lag. It could probably do 1080p footage but if you're just gonna use it just to copy stuff occasionally, it's fine for that. But again, it's not fast, but it's nice that it does have that option that you get a USB 3.0 port. One thing that I noticed with the Smash Wi-Fi is it's switching speeds are slow. Now, what do I mean by that? So if I take my Wi-Fi device and I'm you know, closer to this one, I have a good connection, everything's good. And then I walk to the other room where I'm closer to this guy, where this is the optimal connection it doesn't necessarily switch. Now it takes several minutes for it to switch where I'm kind of expecting it to switch within a minute or so, but it actually takes a lot longer. Now if I turn off my Wi-Fi and turn it back on on my phone, it immediately connects to this one because it detects that this one's a much better connection, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to switch quickly uh, and detect that this one is better, which it does when I turn off my Wi-Fi and turn it back on. But when I don't do that, it actually takes a lot longer. Now, part of the reason might be that I still have a fairly good connection, even when I'm in the other room to this other guy. So it might be thinking like, hey, this device already has a good connection. Yeah, so why should I switch it over? Or maybe I'm not even checking like, oh, it's, it's a good connection. So should I even check for it to switch over? So that might be one of the reasons. Final thoughts, what do I think? 
I think considering its price, I think it's a pretty good mesh Wi-Fi for the following reasons. It gives you pretty good speeds, really good range. The app is pretty easy to use, gives you a lot of customizations, a lot of options and stuff. In terms of ports, you get extra ports on each. In terms of the mesh Wi-Fi, because typically mesh Wi-Fi's don't give you too many Ethernet ports, at least most of them don't, you get USB ports on each one as well. And in terms of dimensions, if you guys are wondering, it's about the same size as the Orbi, about the same height, about the same width, and about the same depth. So I think it looks pretty nice overall. It performed well the week that I've been using it. So yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment sections below. Thank you guys for watching and smash that subscribe button and like button if you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment sections below.